soon as I saw this title, I just knew I had to play it. As a red-blooded man with a fiery lust for the fairer sex, I couldn't wait to get my peepers on this game's fine fillies and their big fat... Oh, wait. It says hoops. Oh. Of course I jest. I used to watch this at 6am before I started work. And I knew 100% that it would feature zero in the way of wobbly wabbin yabs. You, however, may not have chosen to have watched preschool puppetry at 6am in your 20s, so it's only fair that I should give you the benefit of my knowledge. The Hoops was a 250, yes, 250 episode live action series created and produced by Decode Entertainment and the Jim Henson Company for Channel 4. And they crammed those 250 episodes into just two years, as it ran from January 2001 to January 2003. The Hoobs are a race from the mysterious Hoobland, who are on a fact-finding mission to fill up their so-called Hoobopedia. No, no, Hoobopedia is like encyclopedia. Not a glitter-esque car drive of shame. Behave thine self. Although... They do video children to fill this out, plus they're gathering it for the Who Patriarch Hubba Hubba, who is an old man apparently on his own. There's no hoople smoke without hoople fire, is there? Three of the featured five hoops travel around the UK in the Hoobmobile. Purple Ivor is cautious but thoughtful. Tula, the pink hoob, is caring but a little bit high maintenance. While well, Groove is a smooth-brained dickwit, usually the greediest of the trio, but also the most laid back. These three are given a question about the human world by Hubba Hubba, which they will investigate before coming to the correct conclusion just before the episode closes at the 24 minute mark. Meanwhile, the fifth hoob, Roma, the orange furred character, she travels the world finding facts that she presents as a report around the halfway mark. I can't work out if she's lucky to be doing all sorts of things across the globe or if she's so annoying that they can't stand the sight of her so they just pack her off with a passport and a suitcase. I bet she stinks like a horse's crotch rot. That'd be it. The gang will travel to meet children, which they call tiddly peeps, who will give them food for thought in their quest for wisdom. The Hoobmobile, in which they get place to place in, would fare very well with Just Stop Oil Protesters, as it moves by the power of magic song rather than the fossilised creatures from ancient times. This song is performed by the Motorettes, a biomechanical race that rarely interacts with the Hoobs, but are located somewhere unseen in the vehicle. And what a song they sing, a tremendous rock piece. We're off to see the tiddly peeps on the road we go. What a rock classic. So yes, a rather forgotten kids show. Very formulaic, drenched in Muppet magic. Good stuff. The game was made for Sony Computer Entertainment by West Yorkshire coders Runecraft, who made a fair few licensed titles based on a wide smattering of subjects from board games, Barbie, Caesar's Palace, Tintin, Arthur and Westlife, eclectic for a company who was only around for about four years before being acquired and repurposed by the BBC for their very short-lived 2000 software house titled Games Lab. One fight box and one Robot Wars title later and the studio shuttered halfway through a PS2 and PC Spooks tie-in due for release in 2004. 2004 was a year before Doctor Who came out. They must be gutted. That would have sold gangbusters. The Hoobs game either came in a conventional CD case or the bonus kidnap groove. Look at him, awaiting freedom by Lando, Luke and Leia from his cryogenic suspension. The plot line is very in keeping with that of the TV show, or rather five episodes of said programme. There are five locations, all of which have a respective question related to that locale. The trio will have to knock up the miles on the Hoobamobile, though, as they're going a little further afield than usual, going to places as diverse as the Arctic or the jungle. That's usually Roma's work. Where the piss is Roma in this game? Maybe she got caught smuggling drugs up a puppeteer hole. Oh, and we don't get an audience with the motorettes, which means we don't get the off to see the Tilly Peep song. 
which is an absolute disgrace, a terrible decision, and whoever made it should be made to sleep in a shed for the foreseeable future. A complete disgrace to lovers of fine music. You'll be exploring a very small area on each level, taking note of various objects and creatures, which Hubba Hubba will show you a short video and explanation of whatever it is that you've encountered. You don't actually have to look at these at all and you can head straight to the Tiddly Peeps for their mini games. This means you won't have to spend quite as much time as I did looking at how close this child is to this bear and worrying. One of the mini games also features a polar bear staring hungrily at a seal. It makes me very concerned about the pro bear anti everything else people they had working at RuneCraft in the year 2002. Let me tell you that for nothing. Also, not having to take in these little video clips will be excellent for the no doubt mountainous amount of Hoobs game speedrunners out there. Each area contains three games. The first two are played while talking to the Tiddly Peeps. Upon completing their games, one of the children will give you the correct answer, while the other will be stupider than a slug going for a salt bath. Listen to this goof. Great! I love questions. What is it? Where do fish live? I think they live under the sand. You're a real crumb bum. The then baffled Hoob, you don't get to pick who they are, they elect themselves at the beginning for each particular location, will then have a final game where the answer to the question for the location will be determined, sometimes a little spuriously. These mini-games are fairly basic affairs, and probably what you'd expect for a game aimed at preschoolers. One button, very straightforward, none of them will have you thirsting for more. They are what they are. You'll get to the closing round pretty swiftly, with a fairly simplistic dancing closing round as a reward. A very basic party, this hubba hubba doesn't even put on volivons or pineapple and cheese on sticks. You'll enjoy, inverted commas, very much in effect, this sequence within the hour. And although you'll be offered the chance to do it all over again with another playthrough, as an adult, there's no chance you'll be doing that. You see, there's not a lot to it. I suspect that for children of the year 2002, who terrifyingly enough will be hurtling towards their 30s now, will probably have replayed this multiple times when they got it, given that they were wont to give DVDs multiple views sometimes in the same day. Nothing is particularly engaging for adults, but with the bright colours, familiar friendly voices and Cliff Notes education on life at the beach or in the farmyard or at the mountain range, I think it's fairly adequate interactive entertainment for a womb spawn. Adults would be best off using their chosen device to go and look at those boobs we were promised at the beginning. There's very little in the way of reviews for the Hoobs game, apart from this, from of all places, the Watford Observer. This probably shouldn't come as a huge surprise given that the game was a European exclusive coming out in 2002. They gave it a 3 out of 5 stars in their punchy review, saying, In case you had any doubts, this game is certainly aimed at the preschool market and will provide entertainment for your tiddly peeps. Hoobble doodle do. Which is um, goodbye. And we've got to echo those sentiments now as we bring our review to a close. What's up next? Well, let's have a think. Shall we stay with the PlayStation? A Japanese exclusive of Pingu. Like, subscribe, and K thanks, bye.